Good morning, dear students. I hope that you all are safe and sound. So today, let's start with chemistry lesson one, study of chemical reactions and chemical equations, part two. In the last class, we discussed about the chemical reactions, characteristics of chemical reactions, chemical equations, two sides of chemical equations, that is the reactant side and product side, two steps involved in a chemical equation, word equation and formula equation, and two types of formula equation, skeletal equation, also known as unbalanced equation and balanced equation. We also discussed how to make equations more informative. Since chemical reactions or chemical changes cannot be done always in the laboratory, so are represented as chemical equations. But there are some limitations to chemical equations too. We'll discuss today the limitations of the chemical equations. A typical chemical equations to have following limitations. It does not mention the specific state of substances. Whether the reactant or product or entities are involved in the chemical reaction, chemical equation does not mention its state. The physical state such as solid, liquid, gas, aqueous form of it or precipitate. Therefore, we need to give this information on the basis of our previous knowledge. The equation does not reveal that whether the reaction may or may not be complete. Many reactions are possible in a certain condition. If conditions are not there, may possible reaction will not occur. And in that case, chemical equation neither give us the idea of completion of the reaction, nor give us the idea of the addition of the conditions of the reaction. It also does not give the speed of the reaction. Whether the reaction is a slow reaction or a fast reaction, chemical equation does not give us any idea. It also does not give concentration of the substances. The reactant and product entities involved in a chemical change should be in which concentration dilute or concentrated can only be given by the person who writes the chemical equation. It does not give the conditions of the temperature, pressure and catalyst etc. The chemical equations never give us the idea of heat release or heat absorbed. It does not give us the idea of the pressure increased or reduced or catalyst one, two or many involved in chemical change. Catalysts are the substances which increases the rate of the reaction. These never do take part in a chemical reaction but remain unaffected during the change. A chemical equation does not give any idea about color change so has to be mentioned separately. Every time writing the word equation or the change in a statement is not possible. Hence, we write the formula equation. Formula equation needs to be in support of law of conservation of mass. Hence, needs to be a balanced chemical equation. But how can we write balanced equation? We usually do write balanced equations by two ways. We have to identify first the chemical equation, the formula equation, whether it's the skeletal equation 
or the balanced equation. Then by multiplying and adding coefficient, we can convert skeletal equation to balanced chemical equation. The steps involved are, first, write the chemical reaction in the form of word equation, keeping reactants on the left side and products on the right side, separated by the arrow. Second, write the symbols and formulae of all entities involved as formula equation. Third, balance the equation by multiplying the symbols and formulae by smallest number, which we write as coefficient. And fourth, write the information like physical state, heat changes, conditions, etc. of entities if possible. We'll take one example here. The example is of sodium metal reacting with water to give sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, which can be mentioned as word equation sodium plus water gives sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen. The reactants in the left side of the chemical equation, products on the right side of the equation separated by means of arrow. Then we write the formula equation, specifying the symbol and formulae of the entities. Na plus H2O gives, represented by the arrow, NaOH plus H2. If now we'll see the atoms involved of various element in the chemical reaction, we will first see of sodium, only one atom in the reactant side and this equals to the one atom in the product side. Hydrogen on the other hand are having two atoms in the reactant side whereas three atoms, two in hydrogen gas and one in sodium hydroxide, three atoms in the product side. This makes the formula equation unbalanced equation and therefore it is skeletal equation. Now we will take up the smallest number as coefficient to multiply to the formula and symbols of the entities to both the sides. So to balance hydrogen, we will multiply two in the reactant side to water molecule and two also the product side to sodium hydroxide. After multiplying two in the water molecule and two in the sodium hydroxide, we will observe that hydrogen atoms are altogether four in the reactant side and in product side two. So hydrogen atoms are balanced. Total number of oxygen atoms now after multiplication and adding coefficient is two here and in product side also two, so it's balanced. After this, we see the coefficient added two here in the product side to sodium hydroxide makes sodium atoms equals to two. So we need to multiply and add coefficient two in the reactant side also. Lastly, we add the physical state of substances, that is of sodium solid, water molecule liquid, sodium hydroxide obtained as form of solution aqueous, and hydrogen gas, sodium hydroxide released as or produced as in the form of solution aqueous, and hydrogen gas. So we do get the balanced chemical equation as two molecules of sodium reacts with two molecules of water to give two molecules of sodium hydroxide and a molecule of hydrogen gas. The coefficient added to balance 
the skeletal equation in reactions is known as the molecules. We can also take up the variable for reactant and product entities to balance a chemical equation. Like for example, magnesium burns in air to give white ash magnesium oxide with white dazzling light. So the word equation for the particular change will be magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide plus light. The formula equation will be having the symbol and formula of entities. Mg is the symbol for magnesium, O2, oxygen and MgO, magnesium oxide. If we will see the formula equation, we observe that unequal number of atoms of oxygen in the reactant product side. It's two in the reactant side, whereas only one in the product side. Hence, we conclude it as skeletal equation. We now will take up the variables. A, B and C are the variables of various entities. A is for magnesium, B for oxygen in the reactant side, and C for magnesium oxide in the product side. Now each element will be mentioned to have the equal number of atoms to both reactant product side. We'll start up with element oxygen. It is here as with variable B into two. And in the product side, C with magnesium oxide. Considering B as equals to one, we can see that one into two is equals to C. Hence, C is equals to two. Now for the element magnesium. In the reactant side, we are taking the variable A and in the product side, the magnesium is as in the form of magnesium oxide, so taking the variable C. From the previous one, as C is equals to 2, A is equals to 2. Thus, the balanced equation is Two molecules of magnesium reacting with one molecule of oxygen giving two molecules of magnesium oxide, specifying the physical state of each and every entity. As we complete with the balanced equation, the various informations, conditions, as well as limitations of equations, we now will step forward with types of chemical reaction. Depending upon the number of reactants involved, number of products formed, nature of the entities and type of the entities, we do have five types of chemical reactions. These are combination reaction, decomposition reaction, displacement reaction, double displacement reaction and redox or reduction oxidation reaction. Combination reactions are also known as additional reactions or addition reactions. Decomposition reactions are reverse of combination or addition reactions. Displacement reactions are the one where usually highly reactive metal displaces less reactive metal from its salt solution, also known as substitution reaction. Double displacement reactions are also known as double substitution reactions. About each and every type of chemical reaction, we will study in our next class. So the today's assignment is to write the following statements into word equation. In first case, the change is phosphorus, which is basically the white or yellow one, 
burns in oxygen to give phosphorus pentoxide. Second, barium chloride reacts with zinc sulfate to give zinc chloride and barium sulfate. Carbon burns in limited supply of oxygen to give carbon monoxide gas. And fourth, hydrochloric acid, which is in the dilute form, reacts with sodium hydroxide to give sodium chloride salt, water, and heat. Question number two. To write the balanced equation for the following skeletal equations. In first case, it's carbon reacting with carbon dioxide to give carbon monoxide. And in second example, second number, ammonia gives nitrogen and hydrogen gases respectively after the change. Third question is to define skeletal equation, exothermic changes, endothermic changes, and kindly complete the assignment in a proper way in your notebook.